Hello and welcome to the introduction to lithium ion battery testing. At one point, anyone who works within battery development projects will have to deal with tests and or test reports. You may have to do your own tests and you may have to write your own test reports or you may have to examine test reports from test institutions or even the battery manufacturers. This course will help you to do your own tests right or to critically examine test reports from other parties. I know from my experience that mostly the tests are not done 100% according to the specifications and you will find yourself asking questions like can we accept the test as it is? Can we accept the report as it is? Do we have to redo the test or at least parts of the test? Well, I am sure you will feel very secure about all the tests which we will be discussing during these lectures. Let's get started. So, what's the importance of this course? Well, we need to understand how battery tests work. And that includes a general understanding about the steps of each test. Another very important question, is there any tests needed up front? Or in other words, do I have all the data, all the information to be able to carry out my test? What's the duration of the test? Very important for project management. What is typically done wrong with the test? And what tricks do battery manufacturers have? A neutral third party like a test institute does not have an interest in making the battery cells look good. This may or may not be the case for some battery manufacturers and you should be aware of that. Let me say something about the equipment. Well, battery tests are very often carried out in so-called climate chambers. These climate chambers can very accurately control temperature and humidity. For statistical purposes, most battery tests are carried out multiple times simultaneously. How many battery cells have to be tested? Well, this is an information you will always find within the test specification and within most test specifications the term DUT, which means device under test, is used. A typical test specification could say the OCV measurement has to be carried out at temperature A, temperature B and temperature C, for example, with five DUTs. At this point, I want to mention that climate chambers support multiple batteries for testing at once. A typical size of a climate chamber used for battery testing, that is the size of a fridge, you could say. And within that, you can easily fit multiple batteries at once. Each battery is connected to the battery tester or the testing equipment multiple times. We have cables carrying the current. We have cables for the voltage measurement, which we often call sense cables. And we have one or more temperature sensors. Typical spots for these temperature sensors, that is the terminals of the battery and on the surfaces of the battery. Very often you will find a temperature sensor right in the middle of the largest surface of your battery cell. So looking inside a climate chamber, you could see something like this. You can see the thick cables. These are the cables carrying the current and the thin cables through which the voltage measurement is carried out. In this picture, you don't see any temperature sensors, but you could imagine a temperature sensor, for example, right in the front, in the middle of this big surface of this prosthetic battery cell. Here's a question for you. Why is there an extra pair of cables for the voltage measurement? Hmm? Why do we need this? Well, when we connect the current carrying cables to the terminals, we have a contact resistance. As a result, we have a small voltage drop 
but we want to measure the voltage of the battery independent of this voltage drop. That is the reason. Let's have a look together at some common mistakes when connecting the cables to the battery cell. First mistake, current carrying cables being too thin. Well, high currents heat up a cable which is too thin, the cable heats up the battery and the ohmic resistance of the battery is too low. As a result, the voltage is going to be too high when discharging and too low when charging. Additionally, the temperature change leads to a shift in open circuit voltage because the open circuit voltage itself depends on temperature. The second mistake that is current carrying cables being too thick. Well, a cable has a thermal capacitance and as a result it would act like a heat sink effectively cooling the battery during operation. As a result, the ohmic resistance would be too high and as a result of a too high ohmic resistance, the voltage would be too low when discharging and too high when charging. I think you know what's coming. Yes, OCV depends on temperature and the temperature drop would obviously also influence the voltage. The final mistake which I want to discuss at that point, well, this is current carrying cables being not well connected to the battery. And this is a very, very common mistake. I can tell you I did it by myself. The suboptimal connection between the current carrying cables and the battery cell leads to an additional contact resistance. An additional contact resistance leads to additional heat development during the operation of the battery cell. Well, as a result, the ohmic resistance is going to be too low and as a result, the voltage is going to be too high when discharging and too low when charging the battery. Finally, you guess it, yes, there is once again the influence on temperature on OCB.